tonight on Newsbeat, Jason Batto officially becomes LSU's new student government president. Also, a smoking engine forced a pilot to land a small plane in a field near Baker. And shots were fired near, near Capitol Hill today following an erratic driving incident. All this and more Newsbeat starts right now. Welcome to Newsbeat. I'm Madeline Adams. And I'm Trey Cuvion. Thanks for joining us. We will now go live to reporter Emily Dillon at the Student Union, where the student government elections were just announced. I'm here in the Student Union Live Oak Lounge, where the results of the 2017 student government elections were just announced, as you can see behind me. The Effect campaign was the only major ticket to run with... Leah Sanders and Jason Batto running unopposed for student body vice president and president. There were multiple independent candidates that ran, though the results were largely in favor of the effect ticket. Multiple positions were in fact unimposed, but there will be a runoff election on April 3rd for two seats. I have student body president-elect Jason Batto here with me now. Jason, how are you feeling after seeing the results of your ticket? You no, know, I'm being. I'm very excited right now. Uh, Lee and I ran unopposed, but many of our candidates did run opposed, uh, and we saw a really, really big sweep and a lot of momentum behind the Effect campaign. So now we're ready to sit down, get in office, and start uh, working for the students. Great. Well, there you have it. Back to Madeline and Trey. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. A small plane went down near the Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport this morning. Neither of the two passengers were injured. The pilot landed in a field off Cary Road after experiencing oil pressure problems. He said it was at that time that the engine started smoking, which meant he wouldn't make it to an airport runway. Tracking data shows the plane left Austin on course for New Orleans Lakefront Airport. The plane shows no apparent damages, but law enforcement and first responders were called to the field as a precaution. A woman drove a vehicle into a U.S. Capitol police cruiser on Capitol Hill around 9.22 this morning. Police fired shots during the attempted arrest, but no one was injured. Police spokeswoman, spokeswoman Eva Malecki said officers noticed the aggressive driving on Independence Avenue near the Botanic Garden. While attempting to stop the vehicle, the driver maneuvered a U-turn and nearly struck several officers. The woman is in custody, and Malecki said authorities believe the act to be only criminal in nature is in the preliminary stages and more details will be released as warranted. Although preliminary, this incident appears to be criminal in nature with no nexus to terrorism and in addition, the Capitol complex remains open to the public except for traffic cuts here on Independence Avenue. Well, video game developers are starting to digitize the local economy. Tiger TV reporter Max Merchant has more. Ban Rouge may soon be ready to level up. I'm just hoping for enough success to where I can work on the next game and then work on the one after that. Lance Trahan and his brother are developing their own video game at the Louisiana Technology Park. Lance says that the Technology Park has been a major help in getting their game developed. And right now we're still learning. <laughs> we're still doing all those great things. But and it's but it, I feel like being here, we've learned we we've had chances to avoid mistakes that we could have otherwise made. So He says that Baton Rouge has a lot of potential to be a more developer-friendly city, but that more developers can help attract more business. The kinds of developers LSU can provide. It's an incredibly deep topic, subject matter, that goes into physics, it goes into mathematics, it goes into graphics, it goes into hardware, it goes into software. Um, there's certainly business elements, creative elements, design elements. Mark Abanel, LSU Digital Media Arts and Engineering Director, says that LSU can help hopeful developers find success in Baton Rouge through LSU. Well, there's a few things. There's expertise, which I think is the, key, the reason that this, what makes this center interesting is we have people from all disciplines, uh, uh, from all parts of the scientific world. He says that LSU can help developers learn the skills to get noticed in the industry, but that it takes a lot of self-motivation. Uh, you have got to really want it. Um, there are a lot of people who want to make video games. There's a lot of people who think they want to make video games because they play video games. 
and there is not a shortage of people who have a desire to enter the industry. For now, Lance is optimistic about both his game and the industry. It's, it's a big wide world, so I think everyone benefits from having more choices as far as things to play. I'm Max Mercer with Tiger TV. All right, we'll have to see if these developers can bring back the game to Baton Rouge. And don't check under the bed. St. Francisville offers a spooky attraction, but not for the faint of heart. Abby Rocha joins us with more after the break. The Myrtles Plantation is known for its ghoulish appeal and southern charm. Guests who visit the nationally historic property step back in time to experience the darker side of Louisiana's history, and sometimes even get a visit from the paranormal. Vanishing items, handprints on mirrors, and paranormal activity are not uncommon things to experience at the Myrtles Plantation in St. Francisville. The deep southern antebellum plantation has been the center of intrigue and mystery since 1796. I don't know if they'll communicate with you. After you've been here a while and they really know who you are, and they will know who you are, they'll actually call your name. So yeah, they will communicate with you. The plantation staff believes there are at least 14 spirits on the property and that a few of them are children. I'm not sure if the children know they're dead or not, um, but they do try to communicate with you. I had a young single man stay in one of the rooms one night and he said he woke up in the middle of the night and a little girl was standing over him and when he opened his eyes up, the little girl goes, hello. Although the spirits of children appear to be pleasant, the plantation has a dark past with many deaths occurring on the property like a person. You see them one moment and the next moment you don't see them. I've seen enough and felt enough to know that absolutely they're here. The Myrtles Plantation keeps its rich history alive through guided tours and a bed and breakfast that allows guests to stay the night attracting year-round tourism. Uh, we have people come from all over the world so our biggest impact I guess is on the economy. Very important to let people know what was happening around here 200 years ago. You know, the history is, you know, there's a lot of history here, but also a lot of mystery. Abby Rocha, Tiger TV. They don't have the right. Three. The Myrtles is considered to be one of America's most haunted homes. To investigate the mysteries for yourself, the Myrtles offers daily tours from 9 to 5 and a bed and breakfast for overnight stay. Now back to Trey and Madeline at the desk. Thanks, Abby. Now, the Freshman 15 is no joke, but many people may find it difficult to shed those extra pounds. CNN's Kim Hutcherson has more on the best exercises to lose weight. It's an age-old debate among fitness gurus. What kind of exercise is best for weight loss? Classic cardio, strength training, or a combination of the two? An eight-month study that followed 119 overweight volunteers found that cardio was the winner. After tracking subjects who did resistance training, aerobic exercise, or a combination of the two, Duke University researchers found those who did aerobic work alone shed the most pounds. But don't retire your barbells just yet. The group that did both cardio and strength training actually had the most improved ratio of fat to lean muscle mass. Experts say it's important to throw some weight around, especially as you get older and start losing muscle mass. So do both. Next time you hit the gym, start with weights and finish with cardio. But remember, when it comes to losing weight, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. So don't forget to make healthy food choices, too. This winning combo will surely help you shed those pounds. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutchison. The newly renovated UREC is open until until midnight Sunday through Tuesday, t Sunday through Thursday, and on weekends until 10 for those looking to get in shape. If your mornings following a night in Tigerland have you clinging to a bottle of Tylenol, two Yale students could have your solution. Stay with us. Two Yale University students might have concocted the cure for hangovers. Leon McClintock partnered with molecular biology major Margaret, Margaret Morse to end the sickness following a night of drinking. Morse said that alcohol drains the body of vitamins and electrolytes. Their supplement is made of vitamins and nutrients that promote liver health. You take the powder before drinking and it helps the liver deal with the stress of alcohol. After receiving positive feedback from Yale students, the product is now in the hands of pharmaceutical companies. The hangover defense could be available in April at only $5 a packet. 
Well, that's all the time we have today, but you can keep up with us on social media, and we're always online at lsunow.com. I'm Trey Cuvion. And I'm Madeline Adams. Thanks for watching, and we'll be right back here tomorrow for more Newsbeat. Have a great evening, Tigers.